The Software Defined Data Center is a fully virtualized data center platform designed to provide automation, efficiency, and flexibility that exceeds traditional compute provisioning. NetApp on command workflow automation, integrated with VMware vCenter Orchestrator and the vCloud Automation Center, provides a key component in the form of easily provisioned software defined storage. NetApp Data ONTAP delivers the storage platform for the software-defined storage solution. On-command workflow automation, also called WFA, integrates with On-command Unified Manager and VMware vCenter to define the data sources needed to provision VMware data stores. The vCenter orchestrator is configured to execute WFA workflows, which can then be made available as part of a fully provisioned compute environment to an end user or consumer through the vCloud Automation Center user portal. What would once have been a complex storage and application provisioning process is simplified down from a cross-team effort to an automated end user activity, as it should be. Let's examine the pieces that make up this software-defined storage solution in better detail. On-Command Workflow Automation is a Windows software package accessed through a web UI. WFA pulls data from different data sources, including NetApp On-Command Unified Manager and VMware vCenter, allowing it to execute workflows that perform actions within those environments. Defining and editing data sources is done with a few mouse clicks and some basic address and authentication information. Out of the box, WFA comes with many predefined workflows to automate processes on FAS or V-series storage systems. More workflows can be added by building them yourself using the library of building blocks or through downloadable packages. On the Portal tab, all of the defined workflows are available. It can be easier to parse them by selecting specific criteria, for instance, quality of service. As an example, let's execute the Add QoS Policy to Volumes workflow. First, we identify the FAS cluster and storage virtual machine, formerly the vServer. By choosing a partial volume set, all of the volumes on the storage virtual machine are presented, and we choose the one we wish to define a QoS policy for, such as this one, called Marketing. We'll create a new QoS policy group and define a throughput limit of 35 megabytes per second. Once we commit the workflow, WFA displays the progress of the workflow execution. Green indicates success. We can now query OnCommand System Manager to confirm the operation was successful, although workflow automation would have alerted us if the workflow had failed for any reason. The maximum I.O. throughput permitted for the marketing volume is now capped at 35 megabytes per second. The workflow successfully executed the defined data on tap commands on our NetApp FAS cluster. The next piece of the solution is VMware vCenter Orchestrator, or VCO, which performs automation for vSphere tasks. NetApp provides the on-command workflow automation package for VMware vCenter Orchestrator, which enables WFA workflows to execute natively within VCO. The package contains several VCO workflows that facilitate configuring WFA workflows to run from the orchestrator. This package can be downloaded for free from the NetApp Workflow Automation Community site. We'll take advantage of this package by using one of these workflows to discover the inputs for the WFA workflow we ran earlier. From the Workflows tab, we navigate to Library, NetApp, OnCommand WFA, Tasks, and run Get WFA Workflow Inputs. We'll choose the Add QoS Policy to Volumes workflow. Be sure to enter it exactly as it is in WFA and submit. VCO will fetch the user inputs from WFA. We can watch the order of operations while this VCO workflow executes. The log file contains all the user inputs needed to create a new workflow in VCO that we'll call the Add QoS Policy workflow in WFA. We can do this for any WFA workflow, allowing us to execute all the workflows needed to create and manage a vSphere environment with NetApp storage from a single interface, the VCO.
You can also download many pre-built workflows from the NetApp community site. The remainder of this demo will make use of workflow from some of these packages. Now, let's execute an already built workflow that we'll call WFA. On the Workflows tab, we'll navigate to NetApp, Day 1 Operations, and run the full setup of a clustered data ONTAP NFS volume. This workflow needs to know which ONTAP cluster to run against and the storage virtual machine. Next, the volume size is defined and a name provided. ONTAP features like thin provisioning and deduplication are selected and the appropriate NFS export policy is chosen. Then, the workflow is committed by clicking the Submit button. As with the prior workflow, VCO will display the actions being executed by the workflow and log the results. If you pay close attention, you can see that this workflow, in fact, calls three WFA workflows to complete the provisioning of the NFS volume. We can confirm this by looking at WFA and reviewing workflow execution statuses. Going back to the VCO, the workflow is still running. We can see from the output that it is calling the additional WFA workflows. We'll confirm this again by checking WFA once more and seeing which workflows are being executed by VCO. As we can see, deduplication is being added to the volume, followed by thin provisioning. Just a few mouse clicks and a little information makes a somewhat complex series of tasks simple, executed from a single interface. Now that we've taken some time to get familiar with the automation infrastructure, it's time to put control of deploying applications as a service into the hands of the business consumer, and that's done through VMware's vCloud Automation Center. That QoS workflow we ran earlier has been added as a vCenter orchestrator workflow. Let's now set up a service blueprint in vCenter Cloud Automation Center that can run it. We'll switch to the Advanced Services tab and add another blueprint. This shows us VCO workflows. Navigating through NetApp, Day 2 Operations, Update Storage Object Workflows brings us to the Add QoS Policy to Volume workflow, where we'll select it and press Next. From the Blueprint Form tab, we'll change the names of the entries to make them easier to understand. Selecting the entry and pressing the Edit icon will allow us to rename cluster name to a clearer NetApp cluster. We'll do the same for all the rest of the entries so it's clear they are referring to NetApp objects. For this configuration, the Blueprint will always reference the same FAS cluster, so we'll reopen the NetApp Cluster Editor and set the default value to Cluster 1. Next, we'll open the Constraints tab and set the value to Constant, then change Visibility to No to make the text field invisible. This will keep the consumer from having to worry about this entry. You'll note that the parameter no longer even has an entry box. In fact, Let's just drag this parameter to the bottom of the list so we don't have to worry about it at all anymore. We click Next to move on to defining output parameters, though in this case there are none, so we'll just click Add to finish creating the blueprint. Next we need to publish the blueprint in order to use it. Click the drop-down arrow next to the newly created workflow and select Publish. Finally, open the Administration tab and navigate to Catalog Management Catalog Items. Open the drop-down box for the Blueprint and select Configure. We'll give the Blueprint an appropriate icon for a polished and professional look in the catalog and place it in the appropriate service catalog. The Update button completes the process and this Blueprint is now ready and available for use by the consumer. Let's confirm this by going to the Catalog tab. Here we can see the new Add QoS Policy to Volume Blueprint that we just created. We've demonstrated how to integrate NetApp Workflow Automation and VMware vCenter Orchestrator with the vCloud Automation Center to tie it all together for the end user experience. However, the workflows we have used have been pretty simple. Now we'll use all those pieces to do something more complex. 
As mentioned at the beginning of this video, the goal is to allow end users with the appropriate entitlements to provision their own application environments. We'll do that now to deliver an application-ready Oracle environment. All we need to do is supply a description or label for the environment, a name, select a predefined size, and performance characteristic. That's it, and it only required four short data entry fields and two mouse clicks. The VCO and WFA workflows behind the blueprint execute previously defined automation and templates to produce the requested environment within the software-defined data center. Looking at vSphere, we can confirm the VM for this deployment is being created from an Oracle VM template, though the consumer or end user does not need to be aware or even understand that. We'll also confirm the deployment of storage with OnCommand System Manager. Here, we can see the volumes created by the underlying WFA workflows for the Oracle Home, Data, Logging, and Temp partitions. The total elapsed time for this deployment of Oracle as a Service was only a few minutes. Compared to the days, weeks, or even months that traditional data center provisioning processes can require, the benefits of a software-defined data center with well-defined automation and entitlements is obvious. For more information, go to netapp.com slash oncommand and explore the workflow automation technical reports and resources.